Welcome to Planet Earth. Protect your back on the job every day. So are you telling me that you think when they send people up to the moon, that they send them up there with a fruit bowl? It was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Finest in home video entertainment. This is a very nice brush. They loved reggae. I loved reggae. Planning officers in particular were singled out. And if you're on a phone that has a cord, that means you're not taking a shit. Maintaining good posture. Ian Mackay. Hello. Oh, wow. Hi, Ian. Hey, how, how are you? Sorry, I'm at the. Let me just tell this person I'll call them back. Hold on a second. I'll call you back in just a minute. No, I'll call you back. All right. <laughs> Late night food. Four o'clock food with David Blackwell. Tomato sauce sandwich. Two slices of bread, tomato sauce. Spread the tomato sauce on, close the sandwich, cut it in half and eat it. Eating is optional. They're nice. Try it, tomato sauce sandwich. Better on white bread. Um, but you don't need butter or anything like that. It's like, you know, it's desperation sort of stuff. But I also, I used to like a salad cream sandwich as well. She's basically the same thing. Salad cream, but then you can put crisps in that. That's quite good. Recipes of Desperation. David Blackwell's new recipe book. Out next month. But I never Hello, I'm Maxine Peake and I only ever get out of bed for eggs TV. As a child, I tasted child, pushed on and on like a cracked tile. No oatmeal smile, I've been whispering, fuck under my breath for 40 years. I inhale child, caveman rock, give up the block, give up all your blades and beards, make a basket, sperm shack, puffy project for no child, no child, voodoo child. Mrs. Robinson and Lexus, luxuries that time gives us, too much information, all a taste situation, full people, too full people, my iPhone is full child, when I was a child, a tasted child, oh hot little baby, oh pink little maybe, Sunday smile, I got no tickets, for the rock show, forever, caveman in a snow globe. Oh, hot little baby. Oh, pink little maybe. When I was a child, I tasted child. Pictures that make them this way. A toothbrush, calling. Pink palm in a pink lake. I'm so pale, I'm crying. Cracking of a dirty plate. It's too late. Already pain. Ajax, 
crushed I, make money for life of high, be some dinosaur and crush my flying. I'm a rainbow man and a soul train. I'll be fine here a while. I was a child, returning child. Life vibration, techno beat. I hide away like anyone else. I think with my fingers. They are straight edge revenge. They are mad druggy hippies. I can cry like a new age candle and wax my way through life. The human face is a vortex. Each one, I try to find feeling in some or make the faces up as I go. Love always, Tim the Confessor. Staplers, paper cutters, hole punches. These tools deserve special attention. David, what type of show is this? It's fast, it's bam, it's here, it's spam, it's go. And then say what's on the show. Stuff on the show. Yeah, we've got to say what, like, so that people know what's going on. No, it, and then you we're say, we're not doing that, are we? Well, we're not going to say what's on. I thought on. we were trying to be like pro. <laughs> Do you have a landline telephone? That's all I use for the most part. I have a cell phone for emergencies, but my landline uh, here at Discord House and at uh, at home, I use landline. Oh. Nice. Thank you so much. This is the kitchen in my studio. Um, don't actually do a lot of cooking in here. There is a washing machine that we use. It's a massive stack of paper. Um, this is kind of a kitchen drawer. It's not full of any kitchen utensils. Um, lots of pens and pencils and stationery that I never use, like pens that I got from Japan. And um, other things that seem a bit redundant these days, like paper clips. And um, this is a very nice brush from Japan for drawing with, doing calligraphy. Yeah, these are bronze sculptures. That's kind of a bronze, kind of a bronze turd. And uh, there's some letters that say OK or KO. Um, More of the UK population than Cellnet. Hi. Yeah. What was the first fruit eaten on the moon? I don't know, but I think I'm going to find out. It was actually a peach. You're joking. Why would they pick a peach? Like that's a soft fruit.
I'd spread that on toast, would you, David? I'd eat it as well. Hello, Whisper. Live one-to-one -one chat. Cell phones, it took me a while to figure this out, but cell phones, they're, they're not, the way they operate is that they create, um, they take your sound. Like right now, when I talk to you, you're not hearing my voice. You're hearing a reconstituted digital package to, to get this information across um, the many, many miles and the many various tubes and whatever the fuck it's doing, um, they had to compress it, compress these, these packages. And in and, and, and doing so, I, I think that it, 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 um, it, some, it, it basically compromised or erased certain harmonics. What's my favorite noise? Probably guinea pigs. I love the sound of guinea pigs. Like... Buckle up your legs, someone pissed there. Couldn't feel calendars, so I went and summoned, walked away. Hobby fields, ripe for the picking. This is a French Frenchman. Dancing in a poppy field. There's a poppy. And as you can see, it's nighttime. This is a, a congresswoman with her dogs. Um, and this is a man reading the news of, of all the news that happened in 2020. Epoch. I don't like making I don't like finishing faces a lot, you know, it makes it too real. The trigger. At what age does a tree develop a sense of humor? Move. You wouldn't choose to eat a fruit on the moon, would you? Choose something else, I think. That's what I was going to say. If you're going to go to the moon and eat something for the first time ever on it, I mean, would obvious, it be a bloody peach? The obvious choice would be cheese, wouldn't it? Just... Shop, shop, shop. Do shop. Shop. Spoo. Dance. A dance to dancing. To German prancing. To f***ing France and all the rest. A dance to decadence, a dance to the train that runs through my mind, searching for the snake running into my behind. A dance, a dance, a fairy dance, a dance that will surf into man's hole. A dance that will turn man's hole into man's soul. A dance to all the dead people who say, hey, don't forget we are the ones who create the earth's Wet. A man, a muddy f dance. Hello again, welcome back to another instalment of Picnic X. We're out on a Peak District picnic. We're doing the Ethels, bagging Ethels. If, uh, if any of you don't know what that means, you just have to go straight to uh, That's a dog, by the way. <laughs> uh, go to Google and that'll take. Where exactly are we now, Paul Vella? Black Edge, near, 
Coombs Hill near, near Buxton. Anyway, the next egg theme record at the invitation of the lovely eggs is held here by my good friend and kraut rocker, Mr. John Walsh, and it's Embryo. It's got a picture of a cosmic egg on the front. The band's already called Embryo, so you're pretty much getting two eggs at the price of one. Uh, a, a double omelette held by the omelette himself. Anyway, <laughs> let, let's go and see what it sounds like. So we're going in with Embryo featuring Charlie Mariano, obviously Christian Bouchard is the man behind Embryo and this edition comes from our good friend Geordie from Wawa Records so if you want to pick up a copy of this rare number you can get Geordie's excellent reissue this track's called Abdul Malek and it's a, it's a killer at the invitation of the lovely eggs this is Embryo Picnic Eggs, Andy Rotel Finders Keepers Embryo Picnic eggs Pull yourself close so that you're sitting directly over your work Both feet flat on the floor I understand life coaching a little. And I hate it. Apollon is all day. Welcome to Eggland. The vinyl staircase, Eggland. The castle, Eggland. The shoehorn, Eggland. The nitty nutty, Eggland. A Greg's Eggland. The Baboon Sanctuary, Eggland. The Lamp Stop, Eggland. The Hippie Pork Pie, Eggland. The Dream Sofa, Eggland. The Factory Shop, Eggland. Smile before choose Eggland. Um, what else is there? Sword Museum. That's it. So really great, actually, fantastic sword museum. I see this teenage boy every day, or I did, I don't really see him that much anymore, but I, I, for a while I kept seeing him, and he had a really interesting style, like he had full on, like a Muslim style uh, dress code, I, I don't know what it's called, he seemed cool, he seemed very religious, but cool. This one is a guy I used to buy drugs off in Los Angeles. And I won't say his name, because I'm not a rat or a snitch. But also, it kind of, it was purely accidental. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about him. And actually, it kind of, now that I think about it, I think it's more like me, self-portrait of me being uh, scared of running out of drugs. But it looks a lot like this guy. This one's of like a, 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 a Polynesian girl, Samoan, maybe. I went to high school in the Bay Area, in San Francisco, Bay Area. There's a lot of Polynesians. They loved reggae, I loved reggae. Yeah, just a beautiful Polynesian woman. No real story there. I was gonna do a whole series of construction girls. It was gonna be called Construction Girls. Because when I came here to Cardiff, I kept seeing those orange um, construction uniforms everywhere. 
And I did this one and I really liked it. And then I tried to do more and they, they didn't really live up to the, the hype. They didn't look as good as this one. So I kind of dropped that, that story. Construction Girls. It's a cool band name too, if, if anyone wants to use it. Oh, I think I'm losing my head, he thought. And he had. The whole top half of his head had been dissolved. In the wind, like a Dylan fog. Like a foggy walk. Got a battery for my car. This is kind of a motivational statement and um, a drawing by one of my friend's kids. I had a friend who I had a years long phone relationship with. She lives on the other side of the country. And at some point, um, she, I started to feel a sense of coldness. I did, I was getting the conversations were not, didn't feel the same. They felt removed. I, and I was bothered by it. I didn't understand. We were talking about the same sort of stuff and I just thought it was odd. And, um, and at some point I said to her, um, she said, Oh, I'm, I'm getting rid of my landline. And I, she had two phone lines. I said, Oh, I thought you both, they were both landlines. She says, Oh no, this phone you've been calling me on, I switched over years ago to a cell phone. And I was like, oh, I said, well, let me call you on the other line before you get rid of it. And she answered. And what I heard, and it might have been my imagination, but what I heard was her. Like I heard her in a way that I had not heard in years. Mm -hmm. well, I'm Chad Fair, and you're watching Eggs TV. Oh, that's a wise move. But, uh, you know, I, what, what I think is that how can you eat a fruit on the moon? You know, because you can't take your space helmet off unless you put a, like a grape inside your space helmet and then you could just, you know, like that and get it in your mouth. But, you know. Yeah. A pre-made seat wedge can help. Or you can use a folded towel that's two to three inches thick.
20th century, Charlie Crow and Patty Possum wondered where Shrebrenica had gone. Well, she. I mean, you've probably been in the spaceship so long that you've had all that dried food. Can I just no, put no. something in there as well? Yeah. About uh, the, the longevity of fruit. Well, I mean, it's not that long to go up to the moon, is it? I mean, it's not like weeks, is it? I don't know how I can. <laughs> A funky wonky dance. A dance to America's plastique. 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 He's running rings around me. He's running rings around me. Tried to do, um, tried to use this to make, uh, the font for my one of my albums and uh, Universal wouldn't let me use the the font. Hate him. The incredible La Concha Hotel in Las Vegas. I got this at the um, the Neon Museum. Which if you go to Las Vegas and don't go to the Neon Museum, you're really missing out. I believe I got this one when I was at the um, Escher Museum in Belgium, in, in uh, Holland, I believe, um, or Belgium, I can't remember where I've been or what I was doing, but I was with Cozy Fanny Tootie and it was her birthday and I remember getting this, this magnet. Kutenholm, Denmark, Denmark, a couple of great ones here, Prophecy, I begged my father to take me to this in the 70s, and he finally acquiesced and took me, even though it was a PG-rated film, and, um, um, even I, at that young, young age, knew that it was one of the worst movies I'd ever seen. It's horrible. Halloween 2, people say it's horrible, but I absolutely love it. John Carpenter says he did not want to be making that movie. Carnival Souls, another one of my favorites. Here's something exciting. Auctioneers became town criers. Planning officers in particular were singled out. Bungalow-shaped mini tombs were built around them while they were still alive, kicking and screaming. Each town would have a small collection of these long bungalows without doors. Often, the officers' heads were left visible in grotty mini conservatories. 
while the rest of their bodies were walled and roofed in. The human-shaped houses were charming, despite their purpose, because of their scale. After a week, those inside would suffocate, and the different bits of them would rot in every room. The conservatory was, of course, horrible, and children would dare each other to look at the decaying heads of these once influential people, mostly middle-aged men. you've got a fruit bowl or a fridge, you must have a fridge in a spaceship. What do you mean if you've got a fruit bowl? Well, in your spaceship. Okay. You know, I mean, why did they mention fruit on the moon? There's obviously a reason to have it there, because normally when you think of space, you think about dried, powdered food, don't you, or whatever you get out of them machines and gunk something out and say, oh, this is, you know, this is chips and pie. You right, know, yeah. And, and, but it's not, it's just a, a, like a... Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, you know. High-heeled or platform shoes can throw your back out of alignment and can be dangerous on wet or uneven surfaces. It's best to wear low-heeled rubber-soled shoes. XTV. Jack, Jack, ch, ch, Jack, Jack, ch. Oh, 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 oh. <coughs> I think this one's my favorite. Personal, personal favorite. Lonely cowboy getting some flowers. And this, uh, this is a girl from Mexico here. As you can see, with the flag. And she has no shirt on. She's wearing uh, pink sweats on a bed. This I'm gonna try and paint the actual the, the prefib and buprenorphine tablet thing on, on her, covering her eyes. Because um, eyes are so overrated, Casey. What's going on here, Tim? Well, you can see it is, it's not for sure that this is a man or a woman, but whichever Whichever they are, they're looking at a vagina in a beautiful way. We don't know if it's outside or inside. This person's wearing a turtleneck, which leads me to believe they are an artist. Icky, icky, wang, zang, pow. What's the point of repetition? Repetition is an attempt to understand something through practice so that with each iteration, with each repetition, you are learning something more about the thing that you are doing or the material that you're working with. And even if the action or the, the phrase, whether that's choreography or, or otherwise, is repeated uh, and is, exact, is seemingly exactly the same, it's not because you are dealing with another facet of that new cycle, that new version of that thing. And something that's inherent in that is that you are changing with each repetition. So whilst the object or the movement remains technically the same, your approach to it, your embodiment of it will always be different. Even if it looks exactly the same, even if it feels exactly the same, you are one full cycle more tired and one full cycle less concentrated than you were in the last one. So there, there is always a change with each repetition. And the more of those that you undertake, 
the more you have a sense of the myriad of ways in which those cycles could play out, I guess. And so you are, by default, learning more about yourself and the object or movement or choreography. So you're creating more of a sort of holistic understanding of yourself and that material. How many of these do you normally set? Uh, 500. Can you describe this type of work in two words? <laughs> mm. Modernist punk. The musty grape, Eggland. Paper nail, Eggland. The cattery, Eggland. The dip, Eggland. The Silver Sandwich, Eggland. The Double Fronted Fish, Eggland. The Gravel Pit, Eggland. The Small Stipple, Eggland. The Vacuum Cleaner Pipe, Eggland. A dance, a dance, uh -huh. a dance to the teeth that are in the bucket of my head. A dance, a dance, a dance to the puppet of meat that sways its head over to its feet and sneezes, hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your beautiful f***ing name? <laughs> I'm Katie Puckrick and you're watching Eggs TV. Delicious. From the machine. The other thing I like about landlines is specifically corded phones, which I use, um, not always, but generally speaking, is that if you're on a phone that has a cord, that means you're not taking a shit when you're on the phone with somebody. So there's a lot to say for landlines. Also, um, I don't know if we always need to be on the phone um, and we sort of need to always be looking at a screen. So um, the fact that I don't have a smartphone, um, I, I don't say that as a badge of honor or, or a brag, but rather as a, it's almost like a, um, an acknowledgement that I, um, I require sanity. I require moments of time in which I am not available. Are you some kind of netter? Look, I'll call the manager. Uh, no, sorry. I mean currents, not dead flies. I mean, what would I want with dead flies? Find love on the phone. Call the single. So are you telling me that you think when they send people up to the moon, they send them up there with a fruit bowl? Well, um, it's, it's a nice idea, though, isn't it, that they have a fruit bowl inside the spaceship? You know, just... Just to make it feel homely, I suppose. The potato. If you're real, you're at least the equal of a potato. fuchsias and hungry elephant moths and giant daisies. There were perfect pale blue hen's eggs and tiny speckled quail's eggs. 
but if the two wooden spoons mixed in some petals, unusual goings-on took place on the lawns. When the flowers and their petals, the chickens, the quails and their eggs were given a stir, there was the magical egg clock. And when the egg clock was in charge of time, strange things could happen. I misread it when I bought it. I bought it just to have it. I thought it said with sleeping tablets, <laughs> but it's steeping. Like Andy Warhol fucked up. He should have done that. Sometimes when I wake up, I think of the funniest things. Well, at least to me, I think they're funny. Or I'd like the most surreal, weird things. And sometimes I'll make voice memos. Um, sometimes I'll text them to friends and it just out of the blue. And then, but this was one of them, and it, it was the first thing I thought of when I woke up, was a guy walking twice at the same time. Which I don't know if that even makes sense. Like I said, it's running. It's a long way of saying running. And then, uh, same thing with this. A woman with tattooed eyeballs says so she's finally happy. make you feel at home David? Well you know you kind of see that don't you and it's like you know even if you never eat it you see it there and it's like I know, almost like decoration. And that is funny though that you say would a fruit bowl make you feel homely even though you never eat fruit? Well, it wouldn't particularly make me feel homely but I know people like it it's the thing isn't it you know it's like oh get, buy them a fruit bowl or they've got a fruit bowl in the kitchen you see I've seen them. I've seen one I've yeah. seen them. You know so obviously people like them. You are American insane chicks and dicks. Together we will click into the great golf ball in the sky. Dance, 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 and die. That's a bee! It's a wasp! Oh no, that's a bee! What's the difference? What's the difference between a wasp and a bee? Oh, I'll tell you, cat. The main difference between a wasp and a bee is their attitudes towards other animals like us. See, bees are friendly and they're generally happy insects. Most of them have good jobs, they pay well, and they take pleasure in their work, and they find it satisfying. While wasps, on the other hand, are widely considered to be disagreeable and petty. The wasp is most often unemployed and bored, so he spends his days teasing and picking on other animals. A more suitable difference can be found in their clothes. While both enjoy black and yellow stripes, a bee wears a soft, comfortable sweater that breathes easily. A wasp, on the other hand, prefers a latex corset. Some schools of thought attribute their differing attitudes to their choice of clothing. 
Now, if you tell me, Cat, how do you think you'd feel if you wore a comfortable sweater all the time, or if you wore a latex corset? Doesn't take a lot of brain power to figure that out, does it? Obviously, the comfortable sweater. Unless, you know, you're into that thing. I don't know, Cat. What are you into, huh? Oh, no, you don't, dog. <laughs> it's eyes huge, hungry. I've seen crisps in a bowl. Yeah, we don't have crisp, crisp bowls, though, do you? Like, not specific ones. Do you know what I mean? And not on display. Like, like a fruit bowl. I think that might be it. It is a cruel river that brings forth such a sweet treat, only to carry it away again. As soon as a glove enters the pink glow, the magic begins to take place. So, so, that sort of thing, you know. Ooh, ee. 